Hi class, this is the intro assignment YouTube tutorial for data structures CMSC251 and in this tutorial we're going to walk through the steps that you're going to need to take to set up the development environment that you're going to be using throughout the course. We're also going to use that development environment to create a small Java application. Okay, so let's get started. In order for you to develop Java applications on your laptop, there are two different pieces of software that you're going to need to install. The first is a Java development kit, a JDK. And a JDK is really the backbone of the Java technology. It includes two very important things. It, it includes a Java compiler that allows you to turn your plain Java code into a fully functional Java application. JDK also includes a Java virtual machine and the Java virtual machine allows you to run your Java applications. We're going to be using the Java SE development kit. That's the first piece of software. The second piece of software that you need is an integrated development environment, an IDE. And an IDE is basically the front end for the Java compiler and the Java virtual machine. It includes a set of tools that allows you to do a bunch of different things. For example, write and edit source code, see errors in your source code as you're typing your source code in, see highlighted code syntax. It allows you to automate repetitive tasks. It allows you to compile your code. It allows you to run your programs and do a bunch of other things. We're going to be using the NetBeans IDE. So to install the Java development kit, we are going to go out to this Oracle website. And that's the first thing that we're going to do. We're going to install the Java development kit. Then after we have that installed, we're going to go out to the NetBeans website and we're going to install NetBeans. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I am going to go out to the Oracle website. This is it. Okay. Where you can go to download the Java development kit. To get the whole process started, what you want to do is you want to push this Java button on the left hand side of the screen. It's going to take you to this page. You're going to have to scroll down a little bit and accept the license agreement. Okay. But then what you're going to do is you're going to download the install executable for the Java development kit. And you're going to have to pick the correct one based on your laptop and what you're running on your laptops, laptops, what operating system. I'm running Windows 64 bit. So I'm going to download that install executable. It's going to take a little while to download the executable. And I guess I should say, while the executable is downloading at various points throughout this tutorial, I am going to ask you to capture screenshots of what you're doing. And you're going to have to submit those screenshots as part of this assignment. So please pay close attention for those points where I asked you to create screenshots. And for the most part, um, the screenshots that I ask you to create are going to be when you're using NetBeans to create a Java application. Okay, so pay attention for those spots where I ask you to capture screenshots. Okay, so it looks like I have downloaded the JDK install executable. So I'm going to go out to my downloads directory. Okay, and there it is. It says JDK-8 update 11 dash windows dash x64.exe. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to start up the executable. I'm going to let it run. Okay, there's going to be a series of screens that you're basically going to next through accepting all of the default configurations that are offered up. 
to continue through all these screens. You don't really need to change anything, like I said, except all of the defaults, just next right through the screens, and the JDK will install. And it's gonna take a little time, so we'll be patient and we'll wait. And that's it. I'm going to push close. And at that point, we have the JDK installed. Okay. You can verify that if you want to. You can open up your control panel, go out to your programs and features. Okay. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And there are two things you should see. First of all, you, you should see Java 8, Update 11. And then you should also see Java SE Development Kit 8, Update 11. Okay, so two things you should see. Okay, and you know you've installed the Java Development Kit. Okay, that's the first piece of software we said. Remember I said there are two things we need. We need the JDK. We also need the NetBeans IDE. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to go out to the NetBeans website and we are going to download its install executable. And the version, or I guess I should say the bundle, of NetBeans that I'd like to ask you to install is the bundle that supports all of the different technologies that you see listed on this slide. As you can see on this page um, there are five different NetBeans ID bundles you can install. Okay, And each of them offers different technologies. Well I would like you to install the NetBeans bundle that supports all of the different technologies. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to download its install executable. And that's going to take a few seconds too. So again, we will be patient and wait. Okay, so the NetBeans install executable has downloaded. I'm going to go out to my downloads directory. And there's the install executable. NetBeans-8.0 Windows.exe. So I'm going to run that install executable. Again, accepting all of the default settings okay, that are offered. take a little while too. OK, 
okay but as I mentioned before I'm going to simply next through these screens accepting all of the defaults and I would strongly encourage you to do the same thing
Okay, so that took a little while to install NetBeans, but at this point we have NetBeans installed. And what I'm going to do is I am going to uncheck this checkbox that says contribute to the NetBeans project by providing anonymous usage data. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to uncheck that checkbox and then I'm going to push the finish button. So now if I go out to my desktop, you'll see that I have a NetBeans IDE 8.0 icon on it, which I'm going to double click now to start up the NetBeans IDE. And it's going to load, and it's going to take a little while for it to load. Not an incredibly long period of time, but it's going to take a little while. And then, once it's loaded, once it's opened up, you should see a software application that looks something similar to what you see on the screen right now. Okay, Your startup screen might look slightly different than mine. That's okay. okay? We're going to configure your screen so that it looks like mine in just a few seconds. But this is the NetBeans IDE. Okay, in the upper left hand corner of the IDE, you should see NetBeans IDE 8.0. Okay, and uh, what you see on my startup screen right now are a bunch of different windows. Okay, uh, you see a window for projects, you see another window for files, there is a window that's entitled services, there's another one down below that's entitled navigator. Um, I have a window that's entitled output, okay? And you might not see all of those windows. That's okay. For example, you might not see the output window, okay? You might not see the, the projects window. That's okay. I just closed the output window and the projects window. What you can do to configure your IDE so that it has all the appropriate windows open on it that you're going to be using for development is at the toolbar, at the top of the IDE, you can select the option for window. And then you can see there are a bunch of different windows that you can open, including projects. Okay, that's one window we are going to be using. Okay, there is another window for output. Okay, you can open that up. We're going to be using the output window. If you don't see the navigator window, that's okay. You can go up to the window drop down option and you can select navigator and that will open up the navigator. Okay. But basically, the way you want to configure your IDE is you want to have the following windows open you want to have the projects window open, you want to have the files window open. We are not going to be using the services window. Okay. So I'm going to close that window. And if you can see that window if it's visible in your IDE right now you can close it okay you want to have the navigator window open and you want to have the output window open okay this large gray area in the upper right hand corner that's a code editor okay, you don't see anything there yet though you might see a startup screen there you might see a startup window that has some different messages about NetBeans and if you do have that startup screen, that startup window visible, that's okay. You can leave that there if you want to. I don't have that startup screen visible um, because there's a little checkbox on it that you can uncheck so that when you start up the IDE it won't always pop up. Well I did that, I unchecked that checkbox. Okay, but if you have a startup screen that you can see in this large gray area, that's okay. You can leave that there. That's not a big deal. But the major windows that you're going to be using for development, again, are the projects window. You want to make sure you have that open. The files window, the navigator window, and the output window. And if you don't see any of those windows, that's okay. Don't panic. You can go up to the Windows drop-down option, and you can open them. There's the projects window. There's the files window. There is the navigator window, and there's the output window. Okay. So once you have your IDE configured so that it looks the way my IDE looks right now, what I would like you to do is capture a screenshot of that 
and save your screenshot, paste your screenshot into a Word document or into a PowerPoint presentation, but save the screenshot off somewhere. Okay, so I would like you to capture a screenshot of your IDE as it's configured right now. Okay? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to create a basic Java application starting from the very top and using the NetBeans IDE to create a Java application you have to take the following steps. Okay, You're going to go up to the menu bar at the top, you're going to select the file drop down option and then you're going to select new project. Okay, So file, new project. And that's going to pop up the new project screen. And in the new project screen, you want to make sure under categories, you have Java selected. And underneath of projects, you have Java application selected. Okay, so underneath of categories, you want to have Java selected. And underneath of projects, you want to have Java application selected. Once you've made sure that you have both of those options selected, you can push the next button and that brings up the new Java application window. And in this window, you want to do two things. At the top, underneath of the project name, you want to give your project a name, okay? And I'm going to call this project Student Demonstration. Okay, that's the first thing. You want to give your project a name. You're going to name it Student Demonstration. Then, at the bottom of the new Java application window, you want to make sure that this create main class checkbox is checked. And it should be by default, but if it isn't, don't panic, that's okay. Just make sure you have create main class checked. Okay? And then you want to make sure in the text field beside the checkbox, okay, that you see something similar to what you see in my text field. You should have, in all lowercase, the name of your project, student demonstration. Then there should be a dot. And then beside that, in mixed case, you should see student demonstration again. Okay. And what this is, what these names are, are the names of your package. This is the name of the package that your Java class is going to be created in. And this is actually the name of the main Java class that you're going to be creating. Okay. After you've made sure you've done those two things, you can push on the finish button and then behind the scenes what NetBeans is going to do is it's going to create a Java project for you. It's going to create a package within that Java project for all of your source files, all of your Java files. It's going to create that main class. Okay that main uh, Java file and it's also going to automatically generate some code for you and you should be able to at this point in the code editor see that code that was generated for you. What you're looking at in the code editor right now is automatically generated code for our student demonstration main class. Okay, You can see it at the top of this file it has the name of the package included in it it has the public class declaration, declaration of the class, and then within that class it has the main method. Okay, there's the declaration of the main method. Okay, and you can see that all in the code editor. So you should see at this point code in the code editor, and all of it has been generated for you by NetBeans. Also, in the left-hand side of the IDE in the projects window, um, you should see all the project files for the project that was just created. Here's the project, student demonstration. And then in its source packages folder, you should see the package that you created, student demonstration in all lowercase. And then within that package so far, we have one Java file, the Java file that contains our main class, our student demonstration class. And all that's been generated for you by NetBeans. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually add another Java class to our student demonstration package. We're going to add a second Java class to that package. The steps to add a class to a package are as follows. You select the package so that it's highlighted. It 
see it's in blue, highlighted in blue now. You select it, you do a right click, and then there's a pop-up that appears. There's a bunch of different options in that pop-up. One of them is new. You want to select the new option, and then another pop-up appears. And there are a bunch of different options you can select within that pop-up. One of them should be Java class. You should see somewhere within that second pop-up an option for Java class. That's what we're going to select. If, however, you don't see the, the option for Java class, that's okay. Don't panic. You can select at the bottom of the pop-up, there's an option for other. You can select that. Okay. And then the new file window should pop up. And in the new file window, under Categories, you want to select Java, and underneath the File Types, you want to select Java Class. Okay, And then you can push on Next, and the new Java Class window should appear. And in this window, you want to do one thing. You want to give your class a name. So I'm going to name this class Student. And then you can push on Finish. And behind the scenes, NetBeans generates a second Java class for you, and you can see it in the code editor right now. Again, there's the package declaration at the top of the file, and then there's the public class declaration down below. There's the student class, just this declaration. And also in the projects window, you can, you can see the Java file that's been added that contains that class. Okay, so right now we have two Java files. Okay, in our project, a student.java and a student demonstration.java. We can see them in the code editor. There's the student.java. There's the student demonstration.java. We can toggle back and forth between those two files, updating them both. Okay, and right now all the code in those two files has automatically been generated for us by NetBeans. Okay, but now what we're going to do is we're going to do a little coding on our own. We're going to add some code starting off in the student class. Okay? And the first thing we're going to do in the student class is we're going to give it four instance variables, four private instance variables. Two are strings. One of those strings is for a first name. The other is for a last name. We're going to have a double for a GPA. And then we're going to have an int for total credits. So our student class is going to have four private instance variables. So let's create those instant va instance variables. So four private instance variables, two strings, one for a first name, the other for a last name, a double for the GPA, and an int for the total credits. Okay, So we've got our instance variables declared. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a constructor to this class. Okay, really cool thing about NetBeans, what you can do is you can have NetBeans actually insert that code for the constructor for you. You don't have to code it yourself, okay? which I think is pretty cool. So what we're going to do with your cursor flashing in the code editor, as you see mine is right now, what you're going to do is you're going to right click, Okay, there's going to be a pop-up that appears, and then there's going to be an option for insert code. Okay, you're going to select that option for insert code. And then NetBeans is going to ask you, okay, well, what do you want to insert the code for? Do you want to insert the code for the constructor? Maybe a getter or a setter, or maybe both getters and setters. Okay, but what we want to insert the code for, what we want to have NetBeans generate some code for us for is a constructor. So I'm going to select constructor, and that's what I want you to do, select constructor. And then the Generate Constructor window is going to pop up. And it's going to list all of the instance variables okay, for you in that window. All of the instance variables that you declared should be listed there. There's the first name, the last name, the GPA, and the total credits. And what you're going to do is you're going to select all four of those instance variables. And by selecting them, 
What that means is that all four of those instance variables are going to get initialized in the constructor. Okay. Now I would like you to capture a screenshot of this window, the generate constructor window. So please capture a screenshot of this and paste the screenshot into your Word document or your PowerPoint presentation or wherever you're saving it. So I'd like a screenshot of the generate constructor window. Okay. Once you've taken your screenshot, then you can push the generate button. And then in the code editor, in your student.java file, you should see that NetBeans has generated a constructor for you and has inserted it in your code. Okay. Now, we're going to do the same exact thing for all of our getter and our setter methods. And we're going to have getter and setter methods for each of these instance variables. Okay. So we're going to go through the same steps again with your cursor flashing in the code editor as mine is. You're going to do a right click. You're going to select the option for insert code within the pop-up that appears. Okay. And then from within the next pop-up that appears, you're going to select getter and setter because we want NetBeans to generate both getters and setters for us and we want NetBeans to insert them into our code. So select getter and setter and then the generate getters and setters window is going to pop up and we're going to select all of our instance variables. We want to make sure all four of those instance variables are selected. And you can go through all four of them individually and select them if you want to. Or you can simply check the student option at the top and then all four of those instance variables will be selected. Okay. I'd like you to get a screenshot of this window now, the generate getters and setters please capture a screenshot of this window too. And after you've captured and you've saved the screenshot, push the generate button. And there you can see that more code has been generated and inserted for you by NetBeans. Okay. There are the getters and the setters for the first name instance variable. There are the getters and the setters for the last name instance variable. Here are the getters and the setters for the GPA. And lastly, here are the getters and the setters for total credits. Okay, so one more bit of code we're going to insert into our student class. Okay, and that is the toString method. Okay, so again, with your cursor flashing in the code editor, do a right click, and from within the pop up that appears, select insert code. Okay. And then within the next pop-up that appears, you want to select the toString method. Okay, select the toString method. And again, you want to make sure that all of these instance variables are checked. Okay, because we want all of the, the instance variables to be included in the toString method. Okay, now I'd like you to get a screenshot of the generate toString window and save that screenshot. After you've done so, you can push the generate button and you should see that the toString method has been generated for all of the instance variables and it's been inserted into your code. Okay, so there's our student class. We're not going to add any more code to the student class. Okay, this is all the code that it's going to contain. And by the way, the only bit of that code that we actually coded ourselves that NetBeans didn't generate for us were these four instance variables at the very top of the class. The rest of the code NetBeans generated for us, which I think is pretty cool. Okay. But now um, that we have all of this code in our student class, we might as well compile the code, right? Don't forget it's a two-step process when you're talking about Java applications, right? You, you have to first compile the code, the plain Java code, you have to compile it into an executable, and then you can run your Java application. So let's compile the code, first of all. A couple of different ways you can compile code using NetBeans. The way that I usually do it is by pushing either one of these 
buttons at the top of the NetBeans IDE. Either one of them will do it for you. Okay, if you place your cursor over the buttons, you'll get a little pop-up that sort of explains what the button does. The button that has the hammer and the broom, that cleans and builds your project. Okay, you can see that it says clean and build. And the, the button with just the hammer, doesn't have the broom, will build your project. Either way, what those buttons are going to do are compile your code okay, so that you can run your application. And you must do that, right? Before you run a Java application, you have to have made sure that you've compiled it first. Okay, so let's do that. And what you're going to see, interesting, in the output window at the bottom of the IDE, you can see that there was a, a bunch of messages that were generated and displayed. Okay, and I can't tell you exactly what each of those messages is doing and what they mean. Um, but the one thing that you want to look for, okay, at the bottom when it's done, and you'll know when it's done because it'll stop, at the bottom you want to look for this message, build successful. Okay, that means that your code compiled cleanly, there were no syntax errors in it, okay, and you can, in theory, run your Java application, but we have to do a little more coding first, right, before we can run this Java application, because all we've actually coded so far is this class, okay? We have a really nice class with four instance variables, a constructor, some getters and setters, and a two-string method, okay, but this class isn't going to do anything on its own, right? Okay, until we actually create an object of it, it's not going to do a daggone thing. So that's what we have to do next. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our student demonstration class, okay? And within the main method, okay, we are going to create an object of our student class. Okay, we're going to initialize its instance variables, and then we're going to print out the values in the instance variables. We're going to do a couple of other things in this main method too. We're going to prompt the user for some input and do some other things. But the big thing that we're going to do is we're going to create an object of our student class. Okay, so we want to make sure that all this code goes in the main method, right? The main method is a very important method in Java. It's like the starting point for a Java application. Okay. So we want to make sure that we're positioned in the right place in the main method. What I always tell my students to do is place your cursor here at the end of this comment. This, this gray line that you see that says to do code application logic here, that's a comment. Okay. Um, and in just a few minutes, we're going to talk about the, the different, you've probably noticed as I've been coding that there are different um, colors of font that are used for the code that you see in the IDE. In just a few minutes, I'll talk a little bit about that, but anything in gray is a comment. So what I always tell my students to do to make sure that you're positioned within the main method, okay, place your cursor at the end of that comment and then just hit the enter key once. And this is where we're gonna start typing in our code, okay? So in the main method, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create an object of a scanner. We're going to be inputting some information from the user via the keyboard. So in order to do that, we're going to use some of the methods in the scanner class. But if we want to use that scanner class, we have to first create an object of it. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to create an object of the scanner class. Its name is going to be input. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call one of the scanner constructors. It requires a parameter system.in. Something really interesting about NetBeans that you can do, okay, is you can use its IntelliSense feature. And this is a really neat feature of NetBeans. To, to activate it, what you do is you push your control key and then your space bar on the keyboard. And you can see a little pop-up appeared, okay. And in that pop-up, NetBeans is offering me some advice. Okay, it's telling me that the scanner constructor, we know it requires a parameter, and I already started typing that parameter name in, SYS. So NetBeans is telling me, okay, to finish that off correctly, 
okay what you want to to type in is the word system okay so what i can do right now within this pop-up that appears is i can double click on that word system and you can see that netbeans inserted it for me okay well i'm not done Okay, that's not the, the full parameter that needs to be passed to the scanner constructor. Okay, I'm going to hit the dot operator, the period key, and you can see NetBeans IntelliSense feature popped up again. And it's telling me, okay, well, what you want to type in next is either ERR, I, N, out, array, copy, clear property, and it's offering a lot of different suggestions for you to finish off this line of code. Well, what I want to select is system.in, and you can see that's listed there. Okay, that's a parameter I want to pass to the scanner constructor. So I'm going to double click on in, okay? And then you can see NetBeans inserted or completed that line of code for me, okay? Well, I need a semicolon right at the end of the line of code okay which i just typed in something interesting right now okay and before i go on and i talk about what's interesting um, i want to strongly encourage you to use the intellisense feature of netbeans to complete your code and we're going to do a little bit more of that in just a few minutes okay but it's a very very helpful feature that allows you to complete your code correctly give you suggestions for how to complete lines of code and we're going to go through that again in just a few moments. But if you notice right now, in the code editor, you can see this line of code has a, a couple of red squiggly lines underneath of it, underneath of specifically the, the references to the scanner class, right? Well, the reason, the, the, this is NetBeans way of telling us that we have an error in our code. Anytime you see a squiggly line, you know you have a, an error in your code, okay? Also on the same line of code, okay, over where the line numbers are in the code editor, you see what's referred to as a tooltip. That's a tooltip, but you also see a red exclamation mark telling you you have an error. If you place your cursor over that tooltip, there's going to be a pop-up that appears. It's, it's going to try to lead you in the right direction of how to correct the error. NetBeans is telling us what it thinks the error is. It's saying it cannot find symbol, class, scanner. Okay telling us it can't find the scanner class. We're trying to create an object of it, but we haven't imported it, okay? So we have an error in our code. Well, the really neat feature of NetBeans is it will automatically fix this error for us by importing the scanner class. We can fix our imports. And what you have to do is you have to place your cursor so that it's blinking over that line of code Okay, just like I am right now. Then do a right click. There's a pop-up that appears, and one of the options in that pop-up is fix imports. Okay, you want to select that option. Okay, and then there's going to be a window that pops up, fix all imports. And then it's going to tell you, okay, do you want to import the java.util.scanner class? Okay, it's going to offer you that suggestion. I think you need, it's, that beans is telling us, I think you need to import that class. And we do. So we're going to take NetBeans advice and we're going to import the class. We're going to push the OK button. Before you do that, I want you to get a screenshot of the Fix All Imports window. Okay, I'd like you to get a screenshot of the Fix All Imports window. Once you have that screenshot saved somewhere, then you push the OK button. And at the top of this file, immediately underneath of the package declaration, we have a new line of code that's been generated for us by NetBeans. It's an import statement. We've imported the scanner class, and you can see that the errors, the red squiggly lines underneath of the, the references to scanner have gone away. Okay, we've corrected the error. Okay. So now we can continue coding. Okay. Next thing we're going to do in our main method, so go back down to your main method on the next line of code or the next one after that, okay, is we're going to include some system out statements, some system.out.println statements, okay, that we're going to um, use to, to prompt the user for some input, okay. A really cool shortcut that you can use to generate the system.out.println statement is you can type in 
the letters S O U T. Okay, and then hit the tab key, and that beans generates system.out.println for us. Okay, and it even includes the double quotes for the string that we're going to include in our prompt right there, okay, within the statement. Okay, so between those double quotes, we're going to type in a prompt. Okay, please input your first name. Okay, on our next line of code, we have to, and this is where we're going to use our scanner object, okay, we're going to get the value that the user inputs via the keyboard and we're going to store it in a variable. Okay, so in this next line of code, we're going to just declare a string variable for first name. And then we're going to set that equal to, and here's where we're going to use our scanner object, which by the way, we named input. Here's where we're going to use the IntelliSense feature again. We're going to um, hit the dot operator, hit the period key, and there you can see the IntelliSense is popping up again. And what NetBeans is doing is it's offering you a bunch of methods that you can call on your input object to get the string that the user inputs. These are different methods that you can call, okay, on the input object, okay? Find in line, find within horizon. The method that we're actually going to use is the next method. So I'd like you to select that next method. Get a screenshot of this. Just highlight it like I have right now so that the next method is highlighted in blue. Capture a screenshot of this and save it off somewhere in your PowerPoint or your Word document. Okay. But what you want to do to have NetBeans finish this line of code for you is double click on the method. Okay, and there you can see that that line of code is finished off for you, and we're going to end it with a semicolon. That beans won't do that for you. Okay, so now we're going to do that very similar thing, but this time we're going to prompt the user for a last name. Okay, because don't forget, ultimately what we want to do here is we want to create an object of our student. Well, in order to create a student object, we need four pieces of information. We have to initialize four different things, right? A first name, a last name, a GPA, and total credits. Well, all of those initial values, what we're going to do is we're going to get them from the user. We're going to prompt the user for them, and then we're going to use them to create our student object. So let's continue. We're going to prompt the user for a last name. So I'm going to type in S-O-U-T, and then I'm going to hit tab. Then within the double quotes, the empty double quotes, I'm going to type in my prompt, please input your last name. And then I'm going to use my scanner object to get the last name that the user inputs. I'm going to assign it to a string variable named last name. I'm going to use the IntelliSense feature again. I'm going to call the next method. Okay. Then I'm going to prompt the user for a GPA. So I'm going to repeat those steps again. I'm going to type in SOUT, I'm going to hit the tab key, and then I'm going to type my prompt in the double quotes. Please input your GPA. Okay. Now the GPA, unlike the first name and the last name that were strings, the GPA is a double, okay? So to input that from the user, I'm not going to use the next method again. I'm going to use my scanner object, but I'm not going to call the next method on it. But I can use the IntelliSense feature of NetBeans to help me figure out what method I do want to call. I'm going to reference my scanner object input, then hit the dot operator, hit the period key on the keyboard. And then I have a listing of methods that NetBeans is suggesting I might want to use. Hash code, next byte, next byte, and then here's this one next double. Okay. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the IntelliSense feature, it explains what this method is. Okay. Um, down at, at the bottom, there is a description of what the method does. Okay. And it also, some of the information that it tells you is that it returns a double 
that has been scanned from the keyboard. Well, that's what we want to do. We, we want to scan what's been input in the keyboard as a double, and we want to return that. So this is the method that I want to use, next double. So I'm going to double click on it. No pun intended, huh? Okay, I'm going to do this one last time. I'm going to type in, because I want to prompt the user for total credits. So I'm going to type in SOUT. I'm going to hit the tab key, and I'm going to type in my prompt. Please input your total credits. And total credits is going to be input as an integer. Okay, so I'm going to use yet another method on my scanner object. Okay, but I'm going to declare an integer variable named total credits. And then I'm going to get that value from the user. Again, I'm going to reference my scanner object, input, hit the dot operator. And then you can see that NetBeans is offering up some suggestions for methods that I might want to call. Well, the method that I'm going to call is the next int method. Okay, so I'm going to double click on it. Okay, so there I've, I'm prompting the user for four pieces of information. I'm inputting them, I'm assigning them to variables. Now, finally, after all of that, okay, I can create my student object. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next. And I'm going to name the student object student, okay, just to keep it simple. Okay. And I'm going to use the IntelliSense feature again. I'm not even going to complete that line of code. I'm going to, with my cursor flashing on that line of code, I'm going to hit the control key on my keyboard and then the space bar. And you can see IntelliSense is popping up. And what I want to do is I want to call the constructor. Okay. So I'm going to double click on the constructor and that completes my line of code okay, with the exception of the semicolon. So now at this point I have created an object of my student class okay, and the values that I'm using to initialize it are the values that the user has input. Okay, The values that the user has input. Okay, So now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to print out my student object and the way that I'm going to print out the student object is by calling that to string method that we had in the class. So again I'm going to type in SOUT, I'm going to hit tab, okay, and I'm not going to include anything within double quotes so I'm going to get rid of those double quotes, don't need them in this case. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference my student object that I just created, I'm going to hit the dot operator and you can see IntelliSense is giving me a list of methods that I could call on my student object. The one that I want to call though is this toString method. I want to call that. Okay. And the return value from that toString method is going to get printed out via the system.out.println statement. Okay. So that's all the code that we're going to include in our main method in our student demonstration class. Okay. But before I can run my application, I have to compile it. Okay. And by the way, I think what I'd like to ask you to do um, is get a screenshot of your main method. Okay. Just the, the main method in the code editor. Capture a screenshot of that, save that screenshot off, and then after you've captured a screenshot of it, compile your code. And in the output area, as we saw before, okay, at the bottom, you should see build successful. Okay. If you don't, that means you have an error in your code that needs to be corrected. For example, let me illustrate. This is a very, very simple example, but let me remove that semicolon from the last line of code in the main method. You can see we have this big red squiggly line underneath of that line of code and here's the, the tooltip over on the left hand side of the code editor. It's telling me there should be a semicolon at the end of that line of code, right? There's an error, a syntax error. So if I try to compile my code, and I'd like to ask you to do this, try to compile your code now, you're going to get a different result okay, in the output area. At the very bottom you see build failed in red first of all. But you also see right above that build failed message, you see these are actually a bunch of hyperlinks 
that are referencing you to the specific line of code that's in error. So if you were to click on this hyperlink, okay, that says student demonstration.java error semicolon expected. If you click on that, NetBeans takes you to that line of code that's in error. Okay, and you can correct it. You can put the semicolon there and you can see the red squigglies have gone away. You can compile the code again. Okay, and you get a successful build. Okay. So at this point, you can run your Java application and it's actually going to do something. Okay, if we would have run it before we had implemented all of this code in our main method, it wouldn't have done anything, right? Nothing. But now we have a lot of nice code in our main method and we can run our Java application. Well, to run a Java application, there's a button at the top of the IDE. Okay, run project has a green triangle that's pointing to the right. You can, you can push that button. And the application is actually going to run down in, in the output area, output window. You can see it's running right now. Okay. Um, it's a student demonstration run. And you can see that it's running, but you can also see something generated in the output. That's one of the prompts, right, that we had coded. Please input your first name. Okay, so you go down, you place your cursor in the output window where you're being prompted to input your first name and you input your first name and then you hit the enter key. And then you can see the next prompt that we coded. Please input your last name. Okay, so you place your cursor down in the output window and you type in your last name and you hit enter. Then you're being prompted to input a GPA. So I'm going to input a double. Okay, 3.5. And now, last but not least, I'm being prompted to input my total credits. Okay, so I'm going to input 21, an int, an integer. Okay, and then the last thing that happens is I print out the contents of the student object that I created. And there you can see, there it is. The student object that we created has a first name equal to Sue, a last name equal to Chaklowski, a GPA of 3.5, and a total credits of 21. Okay, so after you've run your application successfully like this, what I would like you to do is capture a screenshot of that. Okay, so please capture a, a screenshot of running the application and save that screenshot off somewhere. Okay. Now, you may be asking yourself, okay, well, I can see I have a project, and by the way, I have a bunch of Java projects you can see um, in, in the IDE. I've created a bunch of student, a bunch of Java projects. You only have one so far, and that's the way it should be for you, okay? I have a bunch of other ones that I've created, and by the end of this course, you too are gonna have plenty of Java projects that'll show up in, in NetBeans. Right now, you only have one, and it should be named Student Demonstration. Okay, you can find all of, all of you'll, you'll see all of these Java projects and all of their files, okay, within the IDE, but they're also saved out, okay, on your laptop. And as you were installing NetBeans, if you didn't make any changes, okay, to any of the default settings, okay, which is what I encouraged you to do when you were installing NetBeans, if you didn't change any of the default settings, then your project should be saved, okay, out underneath of documents you should see a NetBeans projects folder and within that folder are all of the the Java projects all of your Java applications including the one that we just created the student demonstration okay and you can actually access the the files um, on your physical laptop outside of the IDE if you want to okay so they're all saved on your laptop in this NetBeans projects folder directory. Assuming you didn't make any changes to the default settings that were offered to you when you were installing NetBeans. Okay. Now a couple of last things that I want to illustrate in this tutorial, some cool things that you can do that you're going to actually have to do as part of this course. What, what you'll be submitting to me, even as part of this assignment, is your student demonstration Java project. Well, a really cool feature of NetBeans, OK, 
okay, is you can export this project to a zip file. What you'll be submitting to me is a zip file of the project. Okay, so what you can do with the project selected, okay, so select student demonstration so that it's highlighted, just as you see right now in blue. Go up to the, to the menu bar at the top of the IED and select File, the File drop-down option. And then in that op drop-down option, there is a specific option for Export. Okay, And then underneath of Export, there's an option for To Zip. You want to select that. Okay, And in the Export Projects To Zip, you don't necessarily have to do this. I usually do, okay? What I'll specify is a directory, a build zip directory to which the zip folder for this project will be exported, okay? I usually change this build zip directory path, okay? And you can even change the name of the zip file if you wish. You, you don't necessarily have to. But what I usually do within this export projects to zip, I push the browse button beside build zip, and I will usually choose a folder somewhere in my C drive. Okay, and then you can give the, the zip file a name. I'm just going to name it student demonstration.zip. And then you push save, and then you push export. Okay and out in the folder where you specified you should now have a zip file named however you named it and if you double click in that zip file you should see your student demonstration project okay with all of its files okay those are the steps you're going to want to take i am going to ask you in every project including this one to submit a zip file of your NetBeans Java project. That's what I want you to do. I want you to select your Java project in NetBeans, go up to File, select Export to Zip, and then specify a destination to which you want to send that zip file. Okay. I zipped mine um, on my C drive. Okay in my Chestnut Hill folder. Here it is. You can see it, student demonstration.zip. Okay. And that's what you're going to be submitting. Okay. This zip file as part of your projects. You'll be submitting those to me. You will be submitting a zip file of the Java NetBeans Java application that you just created as part of this assignment. Okay. So that's the first thing I wanted to, to illustrate. The next thing that's really cool, if you ever wanted to um, print out your code, a really neat feature of NetBeans, okay, if, if you select in the projects window um, a, a Java file, for example, student.java file, really nice option for printing out. If you want a hard copy of your code, if you're one of those people that likes to look at hard copies of, of your code, you can do that. You select one of your Java files, student.java, go up to the file drop down option again, and then there is an option for print to HTML. You select that, brings up the print to HTML window, and I always select in this window open generated HTML in browser, okay, and leave everything else the same. Okay, push on OK. And what it'll do it is, is it'll bring up the code okay in a browser and then you can print out the code from that browser I really like it because it's always color coded okay according to the different fonts um, colors that are used in the IDE and then you can print that out if you like to look at your code interesting feature okay so now going back into NetBeans I promised that I, I would do this a couple of things um, if we go back into the student.java file you can see that there are different colors of font that are used okay in the IDE to help you out give you a better feel for what you're typing in we talked about the fact that all of the, the comments are in gray okay so anywhere you include a comment okay like declaring instance variables that's a comment okay 
it's going to be gray. Okay. Anything you see in blue, that's a keyword, a Java keyword, like private, double, public, class. Those are all keywords. They have important meaning, significant meaning um, in the Java programming language. So they're always going to be highlighted in blue. Okay. Anything you see in green is a field. Okay, a field, an instance variable. Okay, things in black you see are, are classes, names of classes are in black. Okay, the names of the methods are in black. Okay, let me see, scroll down throughout this code to see if we see any other color. Yes, here, orange, another color you will see. Anything you see in orange, what that's telling you is that that's how it's going to be output to the screen when it's printed. Okay, so for example, if I go back into the student demonstration class, all of these places where I was typing in these prompts, okay, they were in orange, okay, and that's exactly how they were output to the screen, okay, um, when I ran my application, okay. So, so anything in orange that's telling you, okay, well, this bit of information is going to be output to the screen when the Java application is run. Okay, so different colors that are used to indicate, okay, try to help you better get a feel for what you're coding. Okay, now another thing I want to show you, going back to the student class, we haven't talked about this navigator window at all. Okay, and it's a pretty interesting window, especially when you're coding classes like the student class. Okay, I have it open in the code editor right now. And down in the navigator, what you can see listed are all of the members of that class. There's the constructor, there's the getter for the first name, the getter for the GPA. Here are the instance variables at the bottom. Okay, so these are all of the members, the methods, the constructor, the, the methods in the student class. They're listed there. And what's really cool about them is you can double click on them and then NetBeans takes you right to that method in the class. So it comes in very handy if you want to quickly navigate through your class, you don't have to sit there and scroll and look and hunt and peck for what am I, what, what was I looking for, the two string method, oh I can't find it. Well just go over into the navigator, select that member, double click on it and NetBeans will take you right to it so that if you had to make changes to it you could. Okay. So I think we walked through um, everything um, that I wanted to walk through in this tutorial. Okay, so we're going to wrap up for now. Um, but what you should be submitting as part of this assignment, okay, is a zip file, okay, of your Java project, your Java application that you created, okay, and you should also be submitting um, all of those screenshots that I requested throughout the tutorial. Okay, I hope you found this beneficial, um, and I will see you in class. Thank you.